Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now, you may or may not know I have got a book coming out, The Merchant of Venison. And what I want to do in the book, I break down carcasses two ways. I want to show you the one method. Now, the book is very detailed, loads of instructions, loads of photos, but I think it would be a cool idea if I had a video to go along with the book. So, I've got a little muntjac here. Now, this method can be used for any size deer, so do not worry. Anything from a muntjac up to a whitetail and bigger, it's all the same. Bone structure's the same, just bigger. So, what I'm going to do, I am going to start off by just taking the neck off, simple, just through. And when I say in the book about sawing, the thing with sawing is you can hear that is physically going through bone. You hear that, and then it will change pitch, it will stop, like that. That's when you've gone into the meat, so that's when you pick up your knife, continue the cut with your knife. Just look at that. Beautiful neck rounds, I would go through those. Do them is also buco. So what we're going to do then, the shoulders. There is no ball and socket joint holding the shoulders on. So you can pretty much pull it and loosen in between. If you can see in there, I'm just pulling, catch the shoulder blade all the way down. You can skim over the shoulder blade and take them off. It's that easy. Again, with this side, bit of shot damage here, can't be out, but you can see we're going through and it almost pulls off. Beautiful. They will go to diced. So what I'm going to do is just trim all that blood meat off, purely because you just get it all over your hands, you get it all over your carcass, can't be helped. You know, these aren't knots on the head, these are shot out in the field. Right then, next thing I want to do is these flanks where they start in by the haunch, keeping my knife pretty much level with the kidneys, as you can see there, where it joins the rib, up, take them off. Again, on this side, as you can see, my knife is level with the kidneys, up, tracing the ribs, they come off, they go into mince, as you can see in there then the kidneys pull them out that easy and you're left there with the fillet the tenderloins now you can just trim along so you can see where they are now these go right up into the haunch what I like to do is just to take them there and there and then we go down each side of the spine and then we just turn it and pretty much, if you always hold the meat out your way or your hands, with your hands, you know, it will help you pretty much to butcher some parts of this deer. By that I mean, look, if you pull it, it comes away absolutely perfect. So we're left with our haunches. So there's that ramp up from the tail. There's one vertebra there. I always go to the next one along mark it with my knife now you may catch the wing of the pelvic bone so it's easier to saw again sawing through that bone if you listen changes pitch there with our steak knife complete the cut so basically we got our haunches we got our shoulders we got our fillets our neck and our flanks we're just going to work on these really quickly fillets tenderloins don't need a lot of work they're going to get boned out for diced and minced so quickly working through the haunch split through that pelvic bone you might be able to get your knife through like that very simple hold it open and then we're sawing directly down the tail. Ooh, bit of dodgy 
dressing out there, mentioning no names. Now when I say about that bone coming up from the tail, coming up from the tail, the first vertebra, next one, we've got the haunch we want. You could cut them longer or shorter, but if you ask me, this is the best and easiest method to do it. So we're just gonna nip out that H bone. And I explain in the book, this is a tricky, tricky shaped bone. It's got a ball and socket. But just take your time with your knife, always just using the tip. If you always look the way I bone, it's just the tip, as you can see me pulling away with the hand at the same time. So it's a pull and cut method. Just trim that off, square that off. Now you could have that as a whole haunch if you want to, but I'm gonna make this one into to a boneless haunch. So through the Achilles tendon, now, this is another one, if you look there, if you hold it and give it a shake, you can see there's a natural gap there. Put your knife straight in, take off your shank. I love venison shanks braised, but again, I'm gonna have this for diced, mince. So just following the bone, very simple. Trim anything that's left off it. I am rushing through this a bit. Next is the haunch. Now I know a lot of you are interested in how we break down the haunch. You can't see it as well on this, but there is two seams. There's a faint one there, and there's one across the top. So just with the tip of your knife, you can pretty much pull this apart. So we're just, just opening up that seam, and then you will come to the femur, can you see it appear in there? So through the patella, which is the kneecap. Now, there is a natural seam underneath here, but if you wanna make it easy for yourself, just get to the end of the bone and just go across. We are left with our thick flank, our knuckle, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm just trimming up any of the flap, if I can get that skin as well, this makes a fantastic little mini roasting joint. Roast this real quick, medium rare, slice it through, absolutely fantastic. Just take any of that skin off, so there we have that. We move on to what is basically our silver side and our top side, taking out the femur, now if you see when I'm boning with the tip, always angled towards the bone, nice gentle cuts along. And then out, nice and simple, it's pretty much a straightish bone, trim off any meat, and then square off your haunch, that'll go to diced, and that will be tied as a beautiful Roasting joint, you've got that one there. What I'm going to do with this one is get a little bit fancy. Again, taking out that H bone, that hip bone. Through that ball and socket, as you can see there. And if you look at me and the way my hands are placed, they're holding open that gap and I'm pushing with one and then releasing the meat with the knife. It's coming gently round and it comes off and again we just trim up. Always trimming as we go, taking off any funk, any undesirable bits. We'll square that off into diced. Come on, then nip off the knuckle of the shank. Always difficult with these small deer. The meat is very thin on the bone, so you're pretty much just holding on to pure bone, so you don't get much of a, a lift, a grip. So we just trim that off. 
And what I'm going to do, just a bit of fanciness, just French trim the end. We'll have this as a whole haunch on the bone. Easy to carve though. We've got rid of that H bone, but that is a lovely, lovely roasting joint for friends, family. Then just scrape the rest of your bone with your knife simple as so next then we're going to work on these shoulders just trimming off that fat there again any blood meat give it to your dogs uh, it's not going to work if you want to eat it it just doesn't look very nice so what we're going to do is the shoulder is a rounded off triangle shape. We take the point of our knife round each side and in there is the ball and socket. I will lift this up and show you. You can just see it coming out there. So we loosen just under that socket just with the point of our knife, just like that. And we should be able to get a finger underneath and pull. And if you look, there you go. There is your shoulder blade out. Cut that off. That will go to diced. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bone this out in one. So, a bit like boning out the thigh of a chicken. Go one side of the bone. Always moving the meat to you. Don't dance around the meat. In the book I explain about taking control of the beast when I was training people you'd see people just dancing around the meat you know and it becomes awkward you'll get tired very easily so just move the meat to you and because I'm mincing this you know I'm not too specific on the cuts as long as I get all the meat off the bone that is the main thing so you know just with the tip of your knife just go over obviously don't cut towards yourself that ain't cool and we will trim those bones up but that will go into diced as you can see nice muscle there we'll easily make two lovely cubes maybe three it all depends how big you want them but that's how we do our diced again with this section we just cut it into three and then through and before you know it you're building up a nice little pile of diced I'm just going to take a bit of that four shank as well so already we've got our diced mince pile going so just repeat with the other side let me just show you that blade bow one more time. So if you get your knife, you can pretty much hear the blade bones in there. So I'm just going to go down the middle, as you can see. Look at my knife angled towards the bone, just exposing the shape of that blade bone, the scapula, as you can see there, look. And then again, either side and work your way up to that ball joint, pick it up, you can see a bit of movement in there, tip of your knife, there's the ball and socket, we go underneath as well, as you can see there, then as soon as you can get your finger in, pull, the butcher's best friend, the wet rag, and there we have the scapula again, blood meat over there through that muscle again cutting it into big chunks and then just through for your diced mince and then again just boning out this thigh and as you get more experience you'll be able to eventually just pick this up like this and just take them off in big chunks like that I mean another way you know with this just hold it get your knife up to the bone 
and skim down it and all the meat comes off easily so just finish that bit off that can go to my diced quickly nip through this bit over to there over to there take off the remaining trim off this four shank here so now we're on to what's left of the carcass is basically that lovely backstrap that loin fillet and what was left of the shoulder and the breast so what I'm going to do is just skim over it as you can see here just exposing that fillet what I'm going to do to make this really really easy is see where we took that flank off straight across you can use dedicated ribs shears or poultry shears or tin snips because it can be pretty tricky to saw through the bone but pretty much what we're aiming at is a nice platform to take off that back strap now some people will go all the way up into the neck I don't personally personally because it's two separate muscles really you know the back strap it sits there it doesn't do a lot so it's nice and tender you could cook it fast obviously here with the paddy whack which holds the beast's head up and you've got the neck muscle the meat it's a bit more tough needs slower cooking so what I do is nip that off use your saw <laughs> and then we can just take off those neck fillets or cut it into rounds again and we can use it to stew just take your time you're left with these nice chunks again straight through for diced and I will repeat with the other side but this is the main bit I wanted to show you is the loin fillet or the back strap now obviously as you can see the spine runs right down the center so what we need to do if you can have a look at the bone you can see it there is with our knife angled towards the bone just go down the entire length of the spine and you will hit bone you will hit the remainder of the ribs this end and then the feather bones of the loin end this end so we repeat with other side and again nicely loosened you have a look loosened off now what you need to do is there's a slight ridge at the loin end on the sixth vertebra just go over it and then get your knife horizontal holding the meat with your hand and pulling as you go and then just skim from one end to the other over the ribs over those feather bones you will loosen it off the feather bones so there's the eye of meat just hanging on we just continue that cut and we've got our whole back strap or loin fillet so again with the other side just skimming if you look at my knife now the angle it's on towards the bone over those ribs so again there it is loosened and it comes off like that now this is what I love about this so simple if you cut these bits off here this will pretty much pull out if you start it off get your hands in look how easy that is and you might just have to loosen the end bit with your knife but there is your loin fillet your back strap whatever you want to call it again with the same with the other side just trim that and then pretty much 
you look how easy this is. Look, sometimes your hands are the best tools you have. So, now, with your loin fillet, depending on how many portions you want, you might want two big ones or three smaller ones, so I'm just going to mark it down. No pressure on the knife whatsoever. If you look, there's nothing. It just goes through and you naturally get to that back strap. So keeping your knife like that, 45 degree angle and off as if you were filleting, well, skinning a fish, not filleting. And then again, if you can see, look, just look at that, how simple that comes off. We can always check it after. And again, you can wind that up and just wiggle at the same time. And there you have your beautiful, and I mean beautiful, loin fillets. Just trimming them up. One, two, three. So, let me just show you that again. Just mark gentle. Look at that. Down, down. Knife on, 45 degrees. Push. You've got it. And with the next one, 45 degrees, push, you've got it. Trim. And then wind it round, give it a wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And you're off free. Again, there's a little bit of trimming. Job is a good one. There is six beautiful loin fillets. So I'm just going to tidy all this up. and We'll have a look what we achieved. I forgot to show you these kidneys, so satisfying. Look at it. It's like peeling a broad bean, just started off. And I love how they just pop out. Very delicate, these little munty ones. Pretty much that is it. Gorgeous little thing. Like that, nip it off. Where's the other one hidden under here? So again, we are just starting to peel it. Look at that. Almost like a macabre orange. So just take that off. And there we have kidney ear number two. Well, there you go, my friends. In a matter of, what, 15, 20 minutes, we've broken that deer down. Now, what we have then is that lovely little rolled haunch. The top side and silver side, we took off the thick flank. That's a great little mini roasting joint, like I said cooked medium rare, sliced thin, on a roll, or in a baguette, perfect. Lovely show-stopping Sunday joint, whole haunch on the bone, two tenderloins or fillets, these beautiful backstrap or loin fillet steaks or parves if we want to be posh. I'm going to have those for my tea, those lovely neck rounds which I absolutely adore. Then we've got our mints there, our selection of diced and our two kidneys. So there you have it, one deer broken down. This is the method I'm using in my book. My book is ready to pre-order. Check out the link in the description. Now the book, I do two methods. There's recipes, there's stories and we go into a lot more detail in breaking down uh, your deer, especially method one, you know, we, we turn that into something really, really special. So yeah, make sure you get it. Uh, a lot of time has been spent on it so we can get every single detail, loads of photos, loads of descriptions, and you too will be able to process your deer, like me. So until next time, my friends, Please click subscribe when my fizzog comes up down in this corner. Also check out my social media, Facebook, Scott Reed, The Scott Reed Project, on my Twitter at The Scott Reed Project, and my Instagram at The Scott Reed Project. So until next time, go on, order the book, you know you want to, and I'll see you again. Take care.